What's up, guys? Welcome back to XP Share, where I share my experience of becoming the biggest artist on the fucking planet. Um, this is episode three, and I still have nothing to talk about. But we're going to talk about how much I don't want to do this shit. Right now, I'm at Aldi. I just came, well, Aldi's. I don't know. We call it, everyone calls it Aldi's, but it's technically just Aldi. But it feels weird to call it Aldi. So I'm at Aldi's. Aldi's nuts. Anyways, I'm here. I just meal prepped. Um, or I didn't actually cook the food, yeah. Obviously, I just bought the food. Look, I'm tired as fuck, bro. I didn't sleep that much last night because I was up late reading and doing last night's episode. I don't want to do this shit. I don't want to go to work. I don't want to do this ruck. That's what I'm about to do right now. I'm about to do a 45-minute ruck to complete my second workout. Uh, right now, the routine I'm on for 40, for 45 hard, for 75 hard, is I'm doing six days of training and then one active rest day. And the active rest day, the first time I did it, I did two walks. But I didn't feel good doing that. I was like, I don't know. That second, like, I definitely could have done more. I didn't really need to just walk twice. So the second time, I did, like, a walk, and I think I did a run. Holy fuck. Oh, yeah, I don't have my, my earbuds today, so if the sound quality is ass, well, I don't really give a fuck. Um, and so this this one, this active rest day, I'm doing, uh, whatchamacallit. I walked this morning. I did two, two and a half miles. And then now I'm gonna do my ruck, but I just took off five pounds because my back was starting to hurt a little bit. And rucking really does take a fucking toll on your back. And I, st I strength train back as well. So really my back is getting the most, gro most growth right now. Um, I guess I just wanna make this episode to tell you guys that this shit is not fun all the time. Like I have a pretty good mood towards what I do, even if it's not exactly what I wanna be doing, because I understand that, shout out to Alex Hermosi, dude, his frameworks are the only thing getting me through like life right now, cause they're so fucking good. Today I watched this episode with uh, Dean Graziosi, however you say his name, and um, only like halfway through, but already so many fucking gems. Like that man is fucking mental. So uh, he was talking about a couple different frameworks. One of them was um, the idea that your circumstance doesn't determine your mood. How you view your circumstance determines your mood. So that's why you have people who will be in horrible, horrible, horrible situations, but they'll be happier than motherfuckers who are living in what you would imagine are ideal circumstances. That's because the circumstances don't matter. Same thing when someone achieves something really, really great and they say, yeah, it didn't make me as happy as I thought it would make me. That's because the reality is humans don't actually care about the circumstances or we don't. It's not about the circumstances, it's about how we perceive them. So if you perceive your nine to five job where you hate your where you go home and you know you you watch netflix for an hour or two and then you you go back to work the next day and you know that's your life if you perceive that as holy shit this is the american dream i'm so happy right now i get to live like this then you're gonna be happy as fuck but if you live in fucking i don't know a fucking mansion in la and you have a million dollars in your bank account and two dogs and a fucking infinity pool but you wake up every day and you go yeah you know it's just not what i want like i don't know this just isn't it like where did i go wrong and you're just all depressed it's like well it is what it is like or maybe you're just stressed out all the time you're like oh my god this is so stressful da, 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 da. so that's one framework basically a long convoluted way of terribly explaining that it's not about the circumstances it's how you view them so even though my circumstances are not ideal right now i do my best to perceive them in a way that's like you know, these are the good old days. Like, I'm going to look back at this one day and be like, holy shit. Like, I almost wish I could go back just for like a couple of days because I'm sure whatever I'm going to be dealing with 10 years from now is going to be very, very difficult and very, very stressful. And I'm really going to feel the same way I feel now. It's just that it's going to be more difficult, but I'll have to become stronger. So it's like, OK, well, if I'm this strong and I can deal with this stuff, imagine if I was this strong and I was dealing with the old stuff, I'll be crushing it. So that's one framework. The other framework is the veteran framework or the veteran mind, whatever the fuck he calls it, where you think about. Okay, um, I think the way he explained it was, let's say you're in traffic right now, right? And imagine every single day of your life, you have no traffic. Everything is mad smooth most of the time. So then the one day you do get traffic, you're going to get pissed off. You're going to be like, fuck, I fucking hate traffic. It's going to suck. But imagine if every single day of your life, whenever you drove anywhere, you always were in traffic. At a certain point, you would just get used to it. You will become a veteran and it wouldn't really phase you that much because you'd just be like, well, this is just part of it. This is just how it goes. This is my normal life. So the idea is that if at some point you can adapt to that, why not just do that today? So actually, as he was talking about the framework, it was funny because I, um, 
like five minutes after he put he five minutes after listening to that part of the podcast the uh i didn't i didn't get into traffic but someone like kind of cut me off in a really aggressive way it's miami you know how it is out here and i immediately applied the framework of just like okay well let's just imagine every single day i knew i was gonna get cut off would i get pissed off about it i'll just be like oh, okay cool it happened that's the thing you know what I mean? So it was super dope. Like I got to apply it in real time and it really worked. Like at first the instant gut reaction was, yo, what the fuck? And then I was like, nod. And I just like, I was just like, nod. Yep. Cool. Got it. Alex is a beast. Like, or, or the person who told Alex, he said that some philosopher told him. So um, super, super sick. I feel like a lot of my content is going to be me just shouting out Alex Hermosi and like Andy Frisella and like a couple a couple people that are just like super super dope that I learned a lot from but I guess it'll be different phases like when I first first started my journey I learned a lot from Gary Vaynerchuk and then uh slowly evolved and like learned from different people different facets whatever 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 and so right now I'm learning a lot from Alex Hormozy because he's just fucking mental and everything he teaches is really easy to apply and very 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 practical so I fucking love it so yeah, um, I, that's what I'm trying to do every day, apply those frameworks to my everyday life and just like try to enjoy as much of it as possible. Because I'm going to do I'm going to be in the situation regardless. And I'm going to do the same things regardless. So I might as well try my best to have a enjoyable experience through them because that's what we're here for, right? And I know that by, uh, once I achieve my result, if I don't fix my frame, if I don't fix my fix my mindset, I'm still going to be just as miserable in the future as I am now, once the circumstances change because I haven't fixed the way I look at them. So doing that now will probably also help me to have a, to achieve those goals faster because I'll just be in a better mood. I'll be more uh, personable, whatever, whatever, whatever. So yeah, I don't know. I guess honestly, when I started this video, I wanted to complain about how much I didn't want to do shit. I didn't want to record this episode. I don't want to do this 45 minute ruck. I don't want to, uh, fuck, I didn't even read today. So I have to do my 10 pages when I get home as well. Um, and just talk about how, like, it's okay to not want to do shit. I felt like for so much of my early career, <laughs> whatever you want to call that as an artist, when I decided to do this shit, that if I didn't feel like making music, if I didn't feel like being an artist, then there was something wrong with me. And maybe I wasn't as passionate about this shit as I thought. Maybe I wasn't as dedicated. I have a song, it's called Objects in the Mirror. And if you listen to that song, it, it really is one of the few songs that perfectly depicts uh what i'm talking about and i remember it used to frustrate me so much i was like damn maybe i'm not meant for this shit like maybe i'm just not like one of those ones you know what i'm saying like you think about all the stories of kendrick and cole and you know the greats the fucking greats dilla fucking whatever and you know you just th hear them talk about yeah all i did was just make beats all day like i don't know what are you talking about like, it was just the most fun uh J john bellion he's like yeah i just made music all day just made like a song a day russ like you think about these these giants and you're like, man, so if I'm not like super obsessed like these guys, then how the fuck am I supposed to make it? And it's just not reality. Not everyone is like that. And you don't have to be like that to succeed. And it's very likely that if you're not like that, you can succeed even more because you have a more balanced mindset towards life. And you're not just going to be a baby that just wants to make music all day because you're going to look at the bigger picture. So understand your strengths and your gifts, right? Like if you're the type of obsessive person that just makes music all day, it's a very big strength. That's great use that to your advantage but if you're the type of person that's a little bit more regular like me who is just using music as a tool to get to where they want to go right like i acknowledge that music is just a drug for me and it's only a drug when i'm having fun with it and i don't have fun with it all the time because this shit gets really difficult you know what i mean so i have lights in here and i'm not even using them it's funny as fuck um and that's okay because eventually over time what happens is things become more fun the less you suck at them and you're gonna suck at first so that's what happens to a lot of people is they don't think they're meant for something they don't think they're passionate about something but it's not that it's just that you suck at it so it's hard to have fun when you suck but over time you get better and better and better and then you start having more and more fun with it so i don't even know where i'm going with this point i guess the point i'm trying to make is it's okay to not want to do something just do that shit anyways and you're gonna thank yourself because you're going to slowly stack on evidence that you just do this. You know what I mean? Like whether you like to do it or not, you get it done. And that's really important because a lot of those people who are just like super, super obsessed and they have so much fun with it, there's going to be a point where they don't have fun with it and they're going to completely stop because they're no longer having fun with it because they haven't built a genuine discipline to do it even when they don't want to do it because they've always wanted to do it. 
So by not wanting to do it and learning how to force yourself to do it anyways, you're setting yourself up for a bulletproof mindset or a bulletproof, uh, uh, you know, work uh, ethic. So that way in the future, when you want to do it even less than you want to do it now, because there's going to be a whole lot of other things that are happening, you're still going to do it because you've already built that practice. You've already built that discipline. So that's what I'm doing now. That's why I'm happy about 75 hard. And that's why I'm happy about putting out these episodes, which by the way, literally in the first episode, I told you motherfuckers, I was like, yo, if you know me in real life and you watch this, just don't tell me that you watch this because I don't want to know because this, this is not embarrassing. I guess it is embarrassing for all intents and purposes. It's really annoying. Like I don't, I don't like that I have to put this out there, but if someone who makes hundreds of millions of dollars is telling me that by putting this out there every single day, my life will improve exponentially. I'd be an idiot not to listen to them. So that's why I'm doing this. And because it just makes a lot of practical sense. But my motherfucking friend already trolled me and sent a fucking gif of a magic card. You know exactly who you are, you motherfucker. And that shit annoyed the fuck out of me for like 15 seconds. I was like, yo, fuck, bro. Like, I can't catch a break, dog. Like, just let me be weird in peace, bro. I don't want you guys to just like, whatever. And I know it sounds really whiny and it is, but I know that there's someone out there who's going to relate to this. So me seeing me act like this is probably going to help you feel a little bit more validated. So if you're going through some similar shit, I fucking feel you. It's okay. Keep doing that shit regardless. And the person is a nice person. I, he's my motherfucking homie. Like I love this guy, but it's just a reminder that because you are a human and you live in this earth realm, everything you do is going to have a reflect. Like, everything you do is a reflection, right? Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So it's like Lil Wayne had this quote in like this Tyler, the creator documentary where he was saying, you know, he said it in the most perfect way. Paraphrasing it does not do it justice. You should just look it up. Lil Wayne, Tyler, the creator quote. But the basic gist was just like, the world is your mirror and you can never let the world judge you. Only you can judge what you see in the mirror. So all of your actions, all of your perspectives, all the things that you do are going to go out into the world and they're going to reflect off of the mirror that is the world and what you get back is a lot of times going to feel like judgment it's going to feel like people uh you know criticizing you or having opinions of you or maybe feeling like you're embarrassed by them but all it is is just a reflection you don't get mad at a mirror for reflecting you when you look ugly you just look ugly it is what it is like the mirror is just letting you know that so when someone reciprocates and like responds to something that you put out even if you don't like what you put out they're not judging you negatively. They're not making fun of you. They're just, they're just showing you that they saw it. They're just like, oh, I see you, bro. Keep it up, I guess. Or like, that was funny. Or whatever it is. They're not thinking about you. But it just, it just feels annoying because you're like, it's so much easier when no one knows you exist. It's so much easier when you can just do shit and no one pays attention. And then once you're 100% confident and you're bulletproof, then they start paying attention. And then you're like, all right, cool. Now I can just like, execute and be the fucking man and be me but that's not how reality works you're gonna have to just understand that life is for the world the earth realm is a mirror and everything you do will have a reflection and if you can't handle that reflection then you gotta improve what you put into the mirror right like if you want people to instead of trolling you with gifs you want them to fucking be like oh my god i can't believe you did that that's so insane like wow like can i work for you or whatever like your goal is like oh my god that's so incredible. How did you do that? Like whatever your dream response is, something that you put out, if you're not getting that response, then you haven't put enough work in yet or you haven't put the right things in front of the mirror. So don't get mad at the mirror. Just look at the reflection, take it for what it is and adjust. And that's really more so advice to myself because, oh, see, someone just honked. Because um, yeah, it's, it's annoying. It's, it is annoying. Even when someone's not being mean to you, it just still feels annoying because you know that you're a little bit insecure about something because of course you're going to be insecure. You've never made a fucking YouTube podcast fucking thing before and you've never been this vulnerable and honest before and you're not really, you don't like that you're doing it. You don't want to do it, but you know, I owe it to myself. I owe it to my future self to get to do this just to, to see how it goes. And, um, yeah, that's all I got. Episode three. Peace.